The terms individualism and collectivism suggest to many people political ideas. And in fact, the, both words were used, as far as I know, for the first time in the 19th century uh, for political ideologies. Anything that ends on ism uh, sounds like a political ideology. And they had already from the beginning a very strong value content. Uh, they were felt to be either good or evil. Uh, in the 1920s, somebody use them as the opposite ends of one scale. And then in the 1960s, the word individualism also emerged in personality psychology and people started to uh, refer to individualist personalities. Nobody ever tried to talk about collectivist personalities, by the way. But I chose the term individualism versus collectivism uh, when I needed uh, words to describe the differences between uh, national societies, differences that actually had been described before me by several different sociologists. So I didn't invent the dimension at all. It was clearly described in different sociological texts, but I used these terms for it. And now here's the definition. Individualism is a society in which the ties between individuals are loose. Everyone is expected to look after her or himself and the immediate family, father, mother and children. And collectivism is a society in which individuals, from birth onwards, are part of strong in-groups, usually the, the family, sometimes the extended family, uh, sometimes the village society, sometimes the tribe. If I oppose the individualists and the collectivist society, uh, and I find that in collectivist societies, uh, people identify with we, they have a we identity. And in the individualist society, obviously, an I identity. In the collectivist society, they are, with a difficult word, exclusionist. They classify others as inner outgroup, and if they are outgroup, they are excluded. And in the individualist society, they, there is universalism, other people are classified as individuals by their own particular characteristics. The competition in collectivist society is not between individuals, but between groups, between tribes, you could say. They are often tribal societies. And in the individualist society, the competition is between individuals. Uh, when it comes to carrying out a task together, in the collectivist society, the relationship comes first. The task comes second. In the individualist society, the task comes first and the relationship may come afterwards. Then there is a distinction which comes actually uh, from the, the literature uh, between high context communication and low context communication. And uh, in high context communication, it means that many, that is for the collectivist society, and that many things are obvious. Uh, so actually the communication can be short. Individualist societies, everything must be specified, and therefore the communications take more words, they are more extensive. And the last thing that I want to bring up is that a key word in collectivist society is harmony. There should be harmony inside the in-group. Even if people disagree, they should maintain the superficial harmony uh, because otherwise the in-group will be weakened, it will, be, it will fall apart. In the individualist society, the idea is that confrontations can do no harm, they can sometimes be healthy. Now, how do we measure the position of a country on the individualism-collectivism dimension? It can only be measured relative to other societies. There is no absolute yardstick for it. And it is expressed in individualism scores, IDV. IDV values can be plotted on a scale from 0 to 100. 
and scores close to zero stand for the most collectivist society and scores close to 100 for the most individualist society. And here is a selection of 14 countries out of the 76 for which we have scores. The highest score for individualism we find in the United States of America. On the high side we found Australia, Britain, also the Netherlands, also Denmark, France, Germany. In general, we find European countries on the high individualism side. We find collectivist societies, low RDV scores in places like India, Japan, also in Russia, by the way, and the Arab countries, Mexico, and the lowest in China. What can we do with these scores? Well, we can, uh, we can correlate them with hard data. And uh, I have a selection here of things that correlate significantly with the IDV scores. And first of all, wealth or poverty of a country Wealthier countries tend to be more individualist, poorer countries to be more collectivist. Uh, the order of logic, in fact, is not that individualism comes first, it is that the wealth comes first and then the individualism follows. Collectivist societies have lower press freedom, individualist societies have more press freedom. Uh, then uh, there are human rights, uh, they were established by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights uh, and they are have been measured by a human rights index and the index is clearly lower for collectivist societies than for individualist societies. It must be said that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was created by people from individualist societies. In the family, in the individualist societies, you have higher divorce rates. In the collectivist societies, lower divorce rates. Often the uh, marriages have been concluded also by the families. And the ideal age for marrying is also different. That's an interesting piece of research. Uh, in the collectivist society, uh, the model relationship is of a somewhat older husband and younger wife. In the individualist society, it's a smaller age differences between the spouses. Uh, another piece of research is about the pace of life. And the pace of life in collectivist societies is slower than the pace of life in the individualist societies, which can, for example, be demonstrated by measuring how fast people walk in the street if they don't have any particular place to go, just if they walk freely to go from A to B, uh, how fast do they walk. Then in language, there's linguists have looked at it, and not surprisingly, the languages of individualist societies use more the word I. Actually, the most individualist language is English, and it is the only language I know that writes I with a capital letter. Uh, there are other languages that write U with a capital letter. Uh, in the collectivist society, sometimes there are languages where the word I is more or less taboo and uh, where you are not supposed to use it. And the last one is about recent applications in social media. There is a difference visible. Individualist societies use social media for an active search, and collectivist societies use it maybe uh, for search by on indication of the in-group or from communicating with the in-group. Now, I want to say something about the relationship between individualism and power distance, because it is clear that uh, countries with a lower power distance are more often individualist, and countries with a higher power distance are more often collectivist. Not always, but more often. But this turns out to be mainly the effect of the wealth. Individualism is strongly correlated with wealth, 
power distance, low power distance is somewhat correlated with wealth. And if we take that effect out, if we compare rich countries with rich countries and poor countries with poor countries, the correlation between power distance and individualism almost disappears. So that is the reason that I treat them still, although they are correlated, I treat them as two separate dimensions. In the United States, some people write about horizontal and vertical individualism. Now that is of course a combination of IDV and PDI. Now the last question is, do IDV scores change over time? Uh, individualism versus collectivism are transferred from generation to generation. You, you get them in the family. And there's research by Professor Beugelsdijk from Groningen who collects answers of two generations, 30 years apart, on questions related to individualism and collectivism. And what it shows is that over the 30 years that individualism has been on the increase. But this has not changed the order of the countries. So the countries have moved along together. And because the scores I use are based on the relative position of the countries, the scores did not change. So the scores can be assumed to be stable over time.